Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Sarah Labar and I like to show you all kinds of things that are related to sewing and history bounding, cottage core and everything in between. How have you been doing lately? As for me, I've been hit hard by the last stretch of winter. We're in early March right now. I can still expect like a good couple months of winter, so uh, I'm holding on. I'm turning 34 this month. When this video is going to be published, I am probably going to be a year older already. Yay me! <laughs> what else is new? I gave myself a shoulder bursitis. I've been prescribed anti-inflammatory medicine and it did help. I haven't had to use it a lot yet. What happened is that I used to sew by hand using a thread that was way too long and so when I used to draw the needle out and the thread out I used to make great arm movements like that repeatedly which caused injury to my shoulder and my reasoning for using a long thread is because I wanted to reduce thread wastage and so to save myself like I kid you not a dollar or two a year of thread <laughs> <laughs> I went and gave myself a shoulder bursitis. So the moral of the story, kids, use short threads when hand sewing. Your bones are gonna thank you. <laughs> So I had to stop sewing for a little while while I was on my anti-inflammatory medicine and during that time I realized that I'm much much happier when I have something in my hands when I'm producing something so I am getting ready to start sewing small projects again in order to start my movements again and adapt to this new method of sewing for the last few years I've been trying to grow my hair as long as I possibly can and my hair really is getting longer but I have a crazy amount of breakage especially around my face and so a little while ago I bought some silk online to make some bonnets or sleeping caps a lot of people use silk caps to protect their hair during their sleep, especially black women, although this isn't exclusive to them and silk bonnets have been around a lot of people for a long time. Many retailers, especially online retailers, do sell silk sleeping bonnets. They generally look like a round mushroom shape framing the head with frills all around the head circumference. I, if possible, would like something maybe a little more history boundly if you will. <laughs> I found no pre-made sewing patterns for a Victorian nightcap in my books or my usual antique pattern retailers but I found a tutorial on the blog so historically about a quote mid-Victorian day cap. But it can totally work as a sleeping cap too. People wore sleeping caps both to protect their hair from breakage and to protect the pillowcases from perspiration and body oil. I made a mock-up already let me bring it closer to the camera. It's made of two pieces. There's a long rectangular piece that goes to frame the face like this. And then there's the crown piece, which is a square piece of fabric with some corners rounded off. So the face framing part, the rectangle gets attached with a bit of cotton woven tape. If I look at the back, there's another set of lacing tape. As you can see, it's a little drawstring. See? So I'll be putting this aside for now and I'm ready to start sewing the real bonnet. So without further ado, let's get to work. Okay, so these are my two pattern pieces for my bonnet. This is the face framing part, a long rectangle, and its edges already have been done. So I basically folded the edges inwards twice by a quarter inch and sewed everything in place using regular whip stitches. So that's my first piece. And I have to do the same thing with the bottom edge of my crown piece here. So I've already folded the edge inwards once and sewed that edge in place using temporary basting stitches. And I have to do it a second time and tack in place with my whip stitches. But before that, I have to insert a drawstring. I've already done one eyelet by hand and now I have to do the second one. That's called an awl. I'm poking it through. And I'm trying not to pull on the threads too much, but inevitably there's gonna be a little bit of puckering around here and here. And so once I'm done with the awl, I go again, but this time with a brush handle. There we go. 
need to sew my eyelet, I'm gonna use a needle and some thread. I'm gonna be using a cotton thread. And so as you can see, I'm sewing my eyelet around the thread so that this end of the thread will be hidden underneath all the stitches. At some point, I'm gonna snip this off and bury the tail ends underneath the sewing. So now that I've done a few stitches around my thread, I can snip the end off. Okay, so my two eyelets are done and I've put a little bit of cotton woven tape through them from the outside and inside like this. I have to roll my edge around the woven tape and sew it in place, but being extra careful not to catch the tape inside the tube it creates so as to make a drawstring. So I'm gonna sew it in place using a needle and some silk thread this time. This is gonna be seen on the outside of the garment. Okay, as you can see my drawstring is done. Here you can see me pull it to the left, to the right, and back out again. Now on this side I've roughly marked the corners here to round them off. I'm gonna mark the bottom two inches on each side of the crown piece. So I've got a mark here and another mark here. So let's roll and sew these two bits first. Now I need to make a rolled whipped gather around that rounded edge here. I've never done that before so I'm actually gonna make a mark at a half inch all around just to make sure that I'm going straight. So all I have to do is to start rolling that edge and whip stitch it in place. I'm using a bit of a bigger thread just to make sure that it's solid. I'm gonna anchor my thread here and then I can just keep doing the same way so that my thread rolls around the edges and makes the edge roll around itself so as to hide all the raw edges. So I'm gonna do this all around and come back when it's done. So I'm currently sewing the bottom two inches of the crown piece on either side of the cap piece by hand. After that, I'll pull on my rolled gather so that they fit the space they have on that piece. I will sew all of this by hand to ensure maximum control. With that, my sleeping cap is complete. It does its purpose. I finished it yesterday evening. I slept my first night in it last night. I think it's gonna take me some getting used to it, feeling the tie around my chin, but I bet in a couple of weeks I'm not even gonna notice it anymore. I had bought a yard of my silk and I still have plenty of it left. So I might make more bonnets like this and slash or I might make myself one or two pillowcases. Now I might get fancy and apply this lace to the brim of my cap like so. I think it could be very cute. It's a leftover from when I did my 1888 writing corset from Arania Black's blog. I'll put a link to it if you want to go watch it. 
but if I do I'm gonna have to bleach it first because this is ivory not white and it looks better if it's white on white. Did I manage to finish this project without hurting my shoulder again? The answer is yes and no. The bursitis does tend to uh, go away and come back and the path to healing isn't linear. So for now I just have to bide my time and make sure that in the future I'll hand sew with a shorter thread in order not to aggravate this old injury. If I am gonna do this mid-Victorian sleeping cap again, I might not use the rolled whip gathers method. They were extremely hard for me to do. I found them very uneven. I couldn't sew in a straight line. I hated it. And I honestly think that they are not the prettiest to look at. If you take a look here, you can see all the, like the little balls of rolled up fabric in between each stitch. So if I am going to do this sleeping cap again, I'm just going to fold the edge inwards twice by the quarter inch and whip stitch it in place. And then I would add the gathers with my usual two parallel rows of running stitches. This is a method that I'm more familiar with and I think I can do that with better results. As always, I would like to thank you very, very much for watching. It was a treat to have you here yet again. If you like this content and feel like sticking around, you may give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. We are here at least once a month on Fridays and cover all subjects related to history bounding and sewing and historical costuming and cottagecore and everything in between. <laughs> Until next time, make sure you take care of yourself, drink plenty of water, unclench your jaw, and I will see you next time. Bye!